Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me, James. Hope you guys are all doing well. And this is the Explorer Notes series from Scorched Earth. Today we continue the story of John DeKea in the final part of our note read-through from the Explorer Notes series. When we left off yesterday, John DeKea had been training Raya how to shoot and make her a better marksman. So sit back, relax and enjoy part two of the notes from John DeKea. I expected those mantises to come back, but not like this. They came at the village from two sides at the same time, and the way they moved. They were more coordinated than any wolf pack. They worked together like men would. It took nearly half a day to fend them off, and they didn't leave us without scars. If attacks like this become common, we're going to be in a heap of trouble. So I've decided to round up my best men to track these critters down. We've got to at least try and find out where they're coming from. We've been tracking these damn things for ages. I can't believe they travelled so far just to attack us. Something like this has to be deliberate. I already knew these bugs were smart, but if they're that determined to kill us, then we gotta wipe them out here and now. That's easier said than done. There's a whole mess of them here. I can't say that I've heard of any mantises living in a group like this, but I'm no expert when it comes to animals. Certainly not in this crazy place. At any rate, I've gotta come up with some sort of plan. Shooting them one by one won't do the trick. I'm glad I decided to take Sasha with me. The Russian showed up in Nosti less than a month ago, but she already knew her way around a gun. Say she learned in a place called Gru. Never heard of it. But apparently they teach you all sorts of tricks, like how to make bombs more powerful than dynamite. The caves the mantises are holed up in are filled with sulfur, so if we set Sasha's bombs in the right spot, we should be able to wipe them all out at once. Provided we can shoot our way in and out without becoming mantis chow. Well, Captain, time to earn your title. I can't recall the journey back to town, but I remember the caverns. The mantises didn't take too kindly to our intrusion. Took half my men with them before we blew them to hell. Well, most of them. One came at us while we were celebrating. I pushed Sasha out of the way like a damn fool. Nearly got myself skewered. Now Raya's got me all cooped up until I finish recovering. Threatened to tie me to the bed if I tried to leave. I'd probably drive myself nuts if she didn't keep me company so often. She was even here when I first woke up. I admit, I was glad to see the sight. How long have I wanted this? I can't place it exactly, but it feels like I always have. I suppose that's how I know it's right. It's not just that Raya's beautiful. I've known beautiful women before but I never got the same feeling when I looked at them. I never felt this at home around them, or anyone for that matter. What happened between us when I was stuck in that room, it wasn't a heat of the moment decision, at least I don't think. All I know is that now, I don't mind sleeping in the same bed every night. Not anymore. Maybe I should change my name again. Seems fitting. I started calling myself John about a week after joining up with Doc Russo. The others never called me to care anyway, so I figured they may as well call me by a name I choose myself. That was part of it, but I think deep down, I also knew the boy that earned the name Decaire was gone for good. Now I think the outlaw named as John Decaire is gone too, so it would make sense to call myself something else. Then again, that may confuse folks, probably not worth the hassle. Besides, I kind of like the way it sounds with an Egyptian accent. Things have been quiet for a while now. Downright pleasant even. At least, that was the case until one of our hunting parties went missing about five days ago. Well, they're not missing anymore. At least what's left of them. We scored every inch of their camp and still can't figure out who attacked them. There aren't many prints from animals, and the ones we've found aren't like any creatures I've seen. There were scorch marks apparently though. Maybe it was a group of them raiders with some of them new flame spewing weapons that I've heard tell about. Whoever it was, I'll see to it that they just live long enough to regret it. We finally tracked down our culprit this morning. The damn thing was one big mean son of a gun. He had wings like a bat, a head like a lizard and spat fire out of his mouth. I've never seen anything like it, not even here. Fortunately, anything will die if you put enough bullets in its head. One of my men called it a wyvern, but he'd never actually seen one before said it was just a legend. No one in town had seen one either. So where'd it come from? 
did it just suddenly fly here from parts unknown? This whole affair doesn't sit right with me. It gives me a bad feeling. Folks have been spotting a lot more of those wyvern creatures. And they're not just throwing fire every which way either. Some spit lightning or acid. On top of that, those big pillars are acting funny. I checked with Sasha, since she doesn't buy the whole Haythor business, and she sees it too. It's making me restless. Between this and the mantises, I'm starting to feel like this place wants us gone. I know that can't be right. There were no spirits of the land to stop the frontiersmen back home, and there are none here. Still, I should talk to Raya. If that tower's dangerous, she shouldn't be worshipping it. I shouldn't have expected her to listen. Raya's kept her faith this long. So there's no way a few wyverns and a talking to were going to change that. Even if that talking came from me. Still, I'm not about to take any chances. Whether it's wyverns, mantises or giant towers. Nothing's harming this town and it's especially not harming her. The prayer groups are getting extra guards and I don't care if she likes it. I expect she won't. In fact, I'll probably have to sleep under the stars for the next few nights. Oh well, I suppose that's what you would call a long term investment. For all my caution, I could have never have prepared for this. Yesterday, the towers started flashing and glowing like a damn lightning storm. When I saw that, I saddled up one of our cats and went to find Raya as fast as I could. Within minutes, the ground was crumbling beneath us, like the lamb was trying to swallow Nosty whole. Once I swung Raya up onto the saddle, I had to ride like a man possessed. Our cat leaping across buildings as they slipped into the ground. Even then we barely made it but we're the only ones. I spotted Sasha hanging to her ledge as we escaped, but I couldn't get to her in time. We're all that's left. I wish I were better with words. I don't know what to tell Raya after all that's happened. A loss like that is always going to ache, but nothing I do or say seems to ease the hurt at all. You know things are ugly when I'm the optimistic one. For now, I've just got to keep us focused on staying alive. Step by step, we're going back to basics, finding water, finding food, finding shelter. This snaggletooth cat and I are all she's got left. And that means I've got to be steady for her. Somehow, we'll make it through this. So far, so good. The cat has helped keep the critters away, so I've conserved ammunition, and we're all stocked up on supplies. For the immediate future, I'd say we're safe and secure. Further than immediate though, I'm not so sure. Neither of us are builders, and there are bigger, tougher animals than long-toothed cats out there. Eventually, we'll need to find some new friends. Losty was the biggest settlement in the desert, but it couldn't have been the only one. I heard rumours that a hunting party had seen some buildings to the west. Sounds like as good a place to start as any. Damn it all to hell. I had everything under control. We were going to make it, but I just had to go searching for that town. What a stupid, boneheaded decision. It's not that the rumour was wrong. There are buildings all right. Crumbling, abandoned buildings that were half buried in the sand and home to a group of damned wyverns that attacked us on the way in. We've managed to give them the slip by taking shelter in this big circular building, but they've been circling ever since. We've got enough supplies for nearly a week. Hopefully they'll lose interest before we start to run dry. The wyverns haven't left. They're fixated on us. They want me so bad, they'll get it. I'm not foolhardy enough to fight them on my own, but I can at least insist Raya take our mount. If things go south, then she'll have a chance to run. Raya, if that happens and you're reading this, don't go crying on my account. The time we had is more than I could hope for. Besides, it'd be downright selfish of me to keep you to myself when you've got so much to offer the world. As for me, I've got one true talent. And those ugly overgrown lizards will find out just what that is when I drag them to hell. And that concludes the notes from John DeKea and the Scorched Earth series. Don't forget to let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the series and who perhaps is your favourite character. And would you guys like to see me do the Explorer notes for Aberration and Extinction perhaps? But let me know down in the comments what you thought of the uh, whole series down there. And thank you very much for all of the early support throughout December on this series. But that's all for myself for today. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games. 
and I'll see you.